Welcome back, Dreamsy here. Now on today's vintage cigarette review, we'll be checking out the pack of Bel Air Refreshing Menthol Cigarettes. Now, to the best of my knowledge and my research, I believe this to be from the very late 1980s into the early 1990s. All right, the Bel Air brand was brought to you by Brown and Williamson Tobacco Company. Now, before we get too far into today's review, I'd just like to say, as always, that I in no way encourage smoking. Smoking is very dangerous. It causes many forms of cancer and also many diseases. All right, why don't we check out this pack of Bel Air refreshing menthol cigarettes a little closer together. And as always, I hope you're having a wonderful day. <laughs> All right, let's take a closer look. Ah, uh, Bel Air. Very nice. We'll examine the outside of our package here. My little camera mount makes a nice boing noise. Very awesome. Ah, we can see here we have a new low prize. Very cool. Lovely Bel Air. We have the nice Brown and Williamson insignia there. Not sure, sir. Maybe Griffiths, Griffiths or Griffins, like the little lion with the crown. That's pretty cool. You have a refreshing menthol. See the all important Surgeon General warning. Quitting smoking now greatly reduces serious risk to your health. Very important message. Very good. See, we have Bel Air side here. Comments, call toll-free 1-800-341-5211. We do have a barcode, so definitely after the mid-1970s, since we do have the barcode. But the way I was able to date the package was... Uh, magazine advertisements and pro, you know promotional images we do have 20 class a cigarettes a little closer you can see brown and williamson tobacco corporation louisville kentucky 40232 usa cool you can see all along the top your little freshness seal pull tab proclaims new low price. Very nice. Top of a package you have the Brown and Williamson insignia and also Bel Air. Very cool. Bottom of a package we have a Illinois tax stamp and Bel Air. Kings, I assume. They proclaim, proclaim to be refreshing menthol. I cannot wait. But we'll dive into the history of uh, maybe the Bel Air brand here. If you want to get down to brass tacks and just watch me open up this pack and inspect uh, the freshness, you can gladly do that and fast forward, but might as well uh, wake the iPad up. And we can look, we'll cite uh, Stanford research into impact of tobacco advertising. And uh, we can look into the collection of Bel Air classics together. All righty. <clears throat> uh, put a pack of Bel Airs right there. It looks good. <clears throat> When menthol cigarettes were first brought to market, they were advertised to the general population as a occasional cigarette to smoke when sick or suffering from smoker's cough. However, in the 1960s, the 1960s brought along the beginnings of a different image for the menthol cigarette. In 1969 alone, 
Lower Lard increased its Negro market budget by 87% over 1968 due to increased efforts marketing its menthol cigarette Newport to the African American market. Likewise, British American tobacco doubled their budget from 1968 to 1969 in order to increase African American radio stations coverage for its menthol cigarettes. Cool. Government surveys in 2011 revealed that menthol cigarettes dominate 30% of the overall market and over 80% of black smokers prefer menthols as opposed to 22% of non-Hispanic white smokers. Recent menthol ads are clearly marketed towards a younger urban demographic. Many of the ads feature models of a variety of ethnicities, and African Americans are particularly targeted. Recent Salem ads from the 2000s feature the slogan, Stir the Senses, and each ad depicts a model smoking in green, <laughs> mentholated ecstasy. Other Salem ads from the 2000s reveal clear youth targeting through a risk-taking appeal. For example, one of the ads presents an underground party, another presents a couple with an intertwining extreme tattoo, and a third presents a scantily clad woman riding on the back of a man's motorcycle, all in urban settings. Well, that's terribly racist. <laughs> Cool's advertisements from 2005 use a slogan, Be True, which urges consumers to not only be true to themselves, but also be true and loyal to the brand accompanying the Be True slogan was a variety of phrases such as be passionate, be original, be smooth, and be bold. All of which appeal to the adolescents and young adults trying to find themselves and develop a sense of self. <clears throat> The Be True ads largely feature musicians ranging from guitar players to disc jockeys, and their ethnicities are also notably diverse. In our collection, Asians, African Americans, and Caucasians are all represented in the Be True ad campaigns. Other cool campaigns from the 2000s, like House of Menthol, are more transparently urban oriented. Featuring boom boxes, speaker system, microphone, graffiti, or skyscrapers, a subset of these ads feature the cool mix, which claims to celebrate the soundtracks of the streets. Though limited edition cigarette packs, urban youth are clearly a priority. Ah, we can look out some. We can check out some awesome Bel Air cigarette advertisements. I don't know why they always have people like swimming and having a good time in cigarette advertisements. You're going to get your cigarettes positively wrecked. You're going to get wet. That's not a good plan. Look at them. <laughs> They're going to have to trail strip their cigarettes or they could just flick them into the ocean. It's, it's God's problem now. <laughs> uh, just out for a nice hike. I'm going to have a nice Bel Air cigarette. Sounds fantastic. Uh, oh, wow, you can get a nifty watch. What is this? Any time is a good time to start. You can get a handsome Timex watch. All you got to do is smoke properly. <laughs> You're going to develop emphysema by the time you get that Timex watch, I guarantee it. But, hey, it might be worth it. <laughs> oh, you can smoke Bel Air cigarettes and you can get a nice uh, picnic basket. Very nice. <laughs> having a nice fucking having a nice smoke very nice yeah but the old cigarette advertisements were pretty awesome I cannot wait to put my face on some of these people it's going to be fantastic but this is more of the relevant ad of the package we do have today this Bel Air and we can zoom in a little bit closer here and we might be able to find a date 
not available in all areas. I can zoom in very tightly there, and we can make out 1989. So I think that is when they did uh, do a little bit of a redesign of the package. So, yep, 1989, to the best of my knowledge, is when this uh, redesign did come up. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Ah, seems like people enjoyed picnics back in the day. Hmm. Pretty cool. All righty, let's go ahead and we'll, start, we'll open up this pack of Bel Air cigarettes. See how they held up since um, probably the, the late 19, I'd say 1989 to the probably very early 1990s. Mm. Oh, I can go for a nice menthol cigarette right about now. All right. Freshness seal is open. I would get rid of my cellophane. I, don't know. I know some people do like to keep the cellophane on, but I am not one of them. Alrighty. Of course, I have my pretty pink tweezers. Oh, very nice. Flip that flap open. Get a nice preliminary sniff. Oh, <coughs> oh wow, that smells great. This is smelling very, oh wow, very fancy looking cigarette. We have Bel Air and we have two fancy gold stripes. Look at that. Awesome. Unsheath the Bel Air from the soft bank. No crispiness whatsoever. Perfectly preserved from the late 1980s, early 1990s. Go for this straggler right here. Perfect. Put our Bel Airs here. Zoom up just a little bit. Awesome. I do love the look of this cigarette. It's a pretty nice looking smoke. I do love that Bel Air. You know what you're getting into. The gold, double gold stripes there on the filter. No crispiness. Very finely packed. I did not pack this pack of cigarettes. All right. Going to go ahead and grab my short cock cutting board. These are just king size, they're short, so the short cock cutting board should be able to handle it. Very cool. And we'll just chop it open, make sure nothing weird's going on. You know how it goes. Alrighty. Chop in here, see how the tobacco looks. I'm sure it's perfectly fine. Tightly packed. Excellent. Wow. Looks wonderful. A few stems in there. Nothing odd at all. Beautiful tobacco. All right. Chop into our filter because ah, I don't know. I got my cock cutting board. I might as well chop into something. Just a plain, plain filter. Nothing fancy. Awesome. I do like that though. Pretty nice little extra touch. Makes you feel fancy when you smoke a Bel Air cigarette. Tobacco, pretty nice. A few stems in there. Oh well, All right. get a nice sniff of our tobacco. Very nice. All right, only thing left to do is fire up the camera and we will have a nice refreshing Bel Air, refreshing menthol cigarette, of course. All righty, fantastic. <coughs> As I dropped it on the floor. That's okay. Uh -huh. Oh, hi, YouTube. All right. Get one of these guys out. Uh, Bel Air. Dry pool's fantastic. Nice notes of raisin. And you get the very subtle uh, menthol as well. Very good. Look very, uh, very interested in the smoke of this. I love a menthol cigarette. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's great, it's really good. And I love the package design too. Very simple. I love the uh, Brown and Williamson insignia. It's very nice, but yeah, excellent cigarette. Yeah, I'm not not putting out the videos with as much vigor as recently.
recently, perhaps, but uh, I don't know. Not too much is going on. Um, my house sold. Uh, purchased a new house, so weekends might be a little bit busier than normal. Uh, I'll try to still, you know, maybe put out two videos a week. You know. What the heck. This is number one. <laughs> Wasn't sure what we we're gonna do next. I mean, I hate to usually do two mentals back to back. So we did the Bel Air. I did find that nice article on uh, the Stanford research into the effects of tobacco. I could have done like more of a look into Bel Air, but eh, what the heck? Maybe we'll do Daytona next. Maybe that'll be the next one. What the heck? But as for the Bel Air. That's good, really good. Not quite as good as uh, North Wind. Now, that's gonna take a, a good cigarette to knock that one off the top of the mountain. All in all, <laughs> middle of the road, menthol cigarette. Yeah, there was something special about that North Wind, I don't know. That was really good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I do really hope. Everyone's doing quite well. Train's right on time. <laughs> That's one thing I'm going to miss about this current house, is the train. When I grew up, we had a, a train that was close by. And I always liked that about this house. I don't know, something about it. I don't think there's a train anywhere near this new place we uh, purchased, but eh, it is what it is. But it's scary, you know, it's a big change. Hate to be, you know, 36 years old and moving and starting over again, but bigger and better things, I hope, you know. Uh, one day at a time, my friends. One day at a time. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's really good smoke. Not as good as that north wind, though. <laughs> that was really good. Hmm. Yeah, but I guess next we'll do the we'll do the Daytona. Had a little snafu with a with a cigarette auction. I didn't read the fine print, and I spent $50 on empty packs of cigarettes, my own stupidity. So, another takeaway, always read the fine print. <laughs> uh, that's my, my own stupidity. It is what it is, we all make mistakes. Hmm. But, I hope you did like today's uh, review of the Bel Air cigarette. Please do like, comment, uh, subscribe. And if you are subscribed, make sure you ring the little notification bell. As always, have a wonderful day. Dreams you out.